Oh, is it an Iris episode? Iris development. Ooh, this could be rich. Maybe while helping someone else write out their feelings, she gets in touch with something from her past. Sarah Florent. I feel like it's highly likely there's a connection, though. Yes, all of us. This is everyone. <laughs> everyone who matters. I didn't realize this was such an esteemed position. She obviously takes a lot of pride in it. <laughs> everyone else is done with Iris is bragging. There you go, that memory doll training really coming in handy. And dead. <laughs> Dramatic stairwell falling. Once Violet Evergarden turns it on, she might not be able to turn it off. I guess it's a skill that is great only in context. Most of the time, people probably don't want you to air out what they're really going through, partly because they're struggling to repress it themselves. But what is it for Iris? Is it a chip? A chip on the shoulder? Big shoes to fill? A feeling of debt? Kind of think of it as this sort of Fruits Basket-esque. It's like the job of seeing your plum. Is Violet going along as well? It's part of her training. I'm sure she'll accidentally crack the case, just like last episode. Farming village? <laughs> Small town girl? Is that what it is? <laughs> so maybe they got through the war relatively unscathed. <laughs> it was resources, huh? That's it? But actually, to what just happened, I think a lot of times an apology is meant to assuage guilt. Or, in some cases, as a request for affection, or a request for attention, if that makes sense. Like, if you can't get what you want out of an interaction, or you feel unworthy, or out of place in an interaction, you can fish for something you did wrong to apologize, hoping that that will be a facilitator of some kind of positive attention, leaving the other person to feel a little bit confused as to why they're receiving an apology for something they didn't really care about. I mean, admittedly, that's tough, you know, they talk about survivor's guilt, and it goes out a lot more broadly than that. When you've managed to benefit or escape things through things that are not your own doing, you know, circumstance or luck while other people have not been as fortunate, it's hard to know what to do with that exactly. I think there's there are parts of it that are great, you know, there's an empathy there, there's an understanding of good fortune, of your own good fortune, but actually to cold robotic Violet Evergarden's dead on point, I don't think the, the apology part of it is really worth anything. There's no reason to feel guilty for the way things go if you didn't do them. There's nothing really productive to be gained from that, unless it's actually driving some action to help people. <laughs> Little by little, we're getting everyone's perspective on Violet. I feel like Iris' first, first reaction to her was sort of icy, a little bit competitive. Not even gonna try. Kalali. <laughs> yes, that, that response was sufficiently robotic for my needs. <laughs> Welcome home. They were expecting her. Oh, the stairwell incident. <laughs> this is why she really regretted bringing Violet. Isn't that exactly what she wanted? Okay, we can take that down about... Eight notches. You can say a lot of things about Violet Evergarden, but can't say she doesn't take things seriously. And she looks very elegant doing so. <laughs> what kind of dolls you got in the big city? Yeah, but we already know you. Mom would make a good auto memory doll. She's sniffing it out. You don't even know the name of your great grandmother? Ooh. <laughs> Wait, I just wanted to see her. Whoops. You all be punished by death. Me and my friend used to do this actually. When I first got to Korea, I had a friend who worked as a KFC delivery driver. <laughs> and like anytime I was hungry, it, it would be kind of dumb not to order from KFC and then let him know I was ordering. Because, you know, I was going to get food anyway. He was going to be delivering anyway. We may as well hang out together. I ate a lot of KFC that year. It was fun. We'd take a little break and like zip around in the, the scooter. Good times. Victimless crime. I mean, are, wait, are they paying? Because <laughs> I paid for my food. If not, that's, yeah, that would be an egregious violation punishable by, by death by... Not robot. Oh, it's her birthday. That's sweet. 
のかき上げないと間に合いません。配達もありますし。Do we really need auto memory doll for an invitation though? She'll tell you. She's not embarrassed. Is Violet ever got in stealing the, the spotlight somewhat? Oh, I see what this is about. This isn't a birthday party. We've been set up. Run, Iris, or stay. Could be fun. <laughs> no one says you actually have to get married. Though this might be a really sensitive topic for her because maybe this is why it means so much to her to be out of memory doll and get out. Maybe running away from a future here. I mean, I think there's often a correlation between the kind of pride that she's exhibiting and judgment. I could be totally wrong about this specific situation, but just from what I've seen and what I've experienced myself, you want to think of yourself in a certain light. Especially when you're young, it's easy to assign categories to things like, oh, this kind of life is... Kind of pathetic, and this is this is what it means to be great, etc. And if that's tied together with an insecurity about where one ends up, then you want to push where you actually are to its emotional limits. And there's going to be a little bit of attachment to being perceived a certain way, which I think is often responsible for exhibitions of status and accomplishment and things like that. Because it's it is a little weird, right? Like the auto memory doll thing. It seems like just a, a job. Maybe it's a great job, but it's not what I would expect as like this super high praise thing. But man, does it mean. A lot to her in a way that's so verbal it almost begs certain questions like why I mean, everyone else is also an auto doll she was talking about it with her whole her colleague staff with everyone and even they were kind of taken aback by the way she was talking this can get real weird oh wow oh wow Speaking of hashing out things in the past, you're gonna do it and you're gonna like it. I thought the mother was seeing through her and you know her actual pain, but maybe the mom just had an agenda. It's kind of harsh. <laughs> this would be a great time to establish a friendship. You know, if you're on the same side, but I guess she's a, she's here on official capacity. Oh, I don't eat unless I'm directly ordered to. She's not lying. Yeah, everyone's so busy thinking about Iris. Is anyone thinking about Violet Evergarden? <laughs> How's she holding up? How's she doing in her new life of peace? There's something to be said for the fact that she at least showed up. She doesn't have to quit her job. He's not bad looking. Okay. Bunch of good looking guys in the crowd. Both of them have sort of blue collar positions. <laughs> Who's this stud? Ex boyfriend? Oh. I see. It was that guy. They got history. It's my party and I can cry if I want to. You have no drama in this family. Drama-free household. Maybe they broke up so she could go to the, the big city to make it as a big-time auto-memory doll. Mission Iris's tears accomplished. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> that's totally fair. You should talk it out. Oh! Very slowly and steadily, the full narrative is being woven together. Is that when she moved? Still fresh, I see. Still raw. Those things last a while. Injections kind of suck. I guess the family doesn't know. Maybe they too could benefit from auto memory doll training. It seems like it's just a weekend course, so. This feels like it was sort of set up a little bit from the beginning to fail. If nothing else, just because they lured her here under false pretenses. It's like a lot of gaps have to be filled real quick. Like, if you don't think someone will do something of their own volition, probably is not a great idea to lure into them under the guise that you know what's best for them. Just saying. She's an adult. As an adult myself, I pride myself on being able to make my own bad decisions. I don't need anyone to do that for me. I, I do a good enough job screwing up my life by myself. I think the only thing we can count on here is a neutral party who perhaps has gone through the Auto Memory Doll Weekend training seminar. Iris. This is where we Iris. all make it better. We all become memory dolls. Oh no! <laughs> Great effort from mom! Cheer up, Iris! Yeah. Here are those gaps being filled. I simply reported the facts as they existed. It's 
Ooh, what kind of apology is this? Admittedly, it's tough. It's a deep skill. You can't just look at the surface. There's all these layers. Yeah, she's not the one. It's a deep and subtle game. Love is war. Love is war. <laughs> this is why it took Kaguya Miyuki three seasons. Don't tell me it's a misinterpretation. Did she misinterpret it? There's no mis misinterpretation there. <laughs> Friends owned. That'll show him? Yeah, that was the perfect thing to say, wow. My reason for being. She's getting closer. Little by little. I don't mean to trivialize what Iris is going through at all. I understand very acutely how painful that situation can be. Unrequited love or any kind of heartbreak. And actually, I think, you know, for what it's worth, she did it right in her way. She turned that pain into something great. You know, she funneled it into ambition. She applied herself to the auto memory doll thing, which is a beautiful thing. Won't solve the underlying heartbreak, but, you know, it probably will give her some time and some space and build up strength so that when she's ready to revisit it, probably in this episode, she's on stronger footing. She could have just curled up in a ball and died. Also, for what it's worth, people talk about the friend zone as this, like, place where dreams go to die forever but in my experience it's not it's not the case sometimes you get things to rest for a while and come back to them and they're they're totally different i mean who knows what where this guy is now she's obviously in a in a better place in many ways although one way or the other it's not really the point you know she's gonna be fine i think the bigger issue here is just dealing with her family and communication and also feeling like she's valued in her world that's probably like the the bigger thing underlying the whole the whole issue and fortunately for her that's there and it's probably there even without the auto memory doll thing even though she's leaning really heavily on that for sort of boost to her own self-image it's probably going to be her quality qualities that she'll find. And I think that Violet Evergarden hit the nail on the head. I mean, what's so beautiful about that whole experience is that she put herself out there. You know, she risked being vulnerable. She opened her heart and took a chance. And I think that's something that should be rewarded, even if it doesn't get the outcome that she wanted. It does take a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to want anything. You know, it takes a lot of courage to try for anything that is sort of outside of your current scope. Immediately, it brings you into some sort of risk. But taking those risks and failing now and then is a hell of a lot better than pretending that you don't want or need the things that are calling you. Feels like we're in a good place for this right now. I might not be able to receive them, but they will come out. <laughs> I believe she can do it. She handled the last one with a really elegant simplicity. I mean, she could also proofread, right? She typed it herself. Her hopes and dreams really come through. Showing real courage. I mean, to give her parents credit and reading between the lines, they're just really worried about her and don't really know how to approach it. That would be a great time for an impromptu spoken letter of your own. Oh no, she's getting billed. I just realized that they're both flowers, both of their names. That took me a little while. Are they all flowers? Is Lucuria a flower? Since her parents really do have... <laughs> That's hilarious. She didn't understand what Iris was implying. That's a great touch. I was going to say, since her parents really want the best for her, just seeing the fact that she's engaged in what she's doing is probably enough. But why do they call her Iris? Way ahead of you. <laughs> did he name her? He, he did name her. What was she doing before this? She was just a girl in a box? Or a bag or whatever that thing was? I also feel like we're going to get more significance in the name Evergarden. Wow. 
Be someone who matches your name. That's very interesting. And really beautiful and perfect on the heels of the Iris story. That's largely what Iris is trying to do. And also what her parents want. And I think part of the, the emotional connection that happens this episode, the catharsis is them both being clear about, about what that is. It's not that her parents have any specific investment in the details of the way things turn out for her. It seems like they genuinely just want her to be happy and just wanted some kind of reassurance that, that she was moving towards that in a way where they could sort of have peace of mind. Which, jokes about the parents aside, is a pretty reasonable and standard thing, even if their party invitation was kind of sneaky. Iris also, at the start of the episode, seems to have had a very specific version of what that was and was attributing that to kind of surface level things, sort of certain labels, her job, making a name for herself in her in her small village, distancing herself from the countryside a little bit, maybe. But then and turning out that that's not really where the heart of her journey is. It's more about becoming and embracing who she is, which is someone with a lot of really admirable and great qualities, someone with a lot of courage, somebody who is willing to engage with the world at an emotionally deep level and to trust and to hope and to believe, to dream. And to me, it feels something like even without that picture being totally clear, there's something really beautiful about who she is right now in the journey that she's on. And that's also true of Violet Evergarden. With a lot of these characters, in a way that's very applicable to life, it seems like there's a lot that's already there, but there's a disconnected way about which people are handling things or going about their lives. And sometimes that's driven by fear or something that's a little bit too big to face up to right away. You know, these big storms that are coming that just need to be faced, you know, and probably feel great to face, even if there's pain that comes with that. Rather than this sort of like tension, you know, this keeping up this illusion that if you just sort of steal yourself and will yourself hard enough, the things that are the most haunting will, will just suddenly disappear on their own. This is a great episode for Iris. I didn't really expect to enjoy her character, but this episode did a great job humanizing her, making her relatable and becoming someone to root for. Very curious to see the other character stories. There's a lot of people in this office that I feel like we're gonna go through one by one. And then how they contribute towards the, the larger whole. It's gonna be very exciting.